What is the most dominant discriminatory cultural force in the West in this culture of war that we are engaged in? They dominate the corporate press and use it to make everyone who opposes them submit. They dominate all of our cultural institutions and is the only accepted narrative in academia. They have apparently replaced the so-called patriarchal system that has governed the West for quite a long period of time. And now you might be thinking, who are you speaking about? Well, you may have been scared to be critical of this group at work or in social functions because having an opinion different than them can motivate your, I guess, HR departments to let you go. Bye, you're fired. This group was in the so-called closet a decade or two ago, but now through its activism, and I am speaking about the activists in this community, the friends I have in this community, as far as I'm aware, could care less what the activists in this community are doing. But again, through its activism, they have pushed many who disagree with them into the closet, which I believe is the ultimate hypocrisy. And yes, we are talking about... And if I say it, you'll know that I'm telling you the truth. The rule is that no matter what you do in your artistic expression, you are never ever allowed to upset the alphabet people. <laughs> you know who I mean. Those people that took 20% of the alphabet for themselves. <laughs> I'd say the letters, but I don't want to conjure their anger. Ah, it's too late now. I'm talking about them L's and them B's and them G's and the T's. One of the ways a culture and a country can defeat God, and I say that sarcastically, is by confronting God and his people on every front possible. If you were God's enemy, that would be the only way because you are his opposite or at least one of the most effective ways. Now I know that there are people that just want to sin a little, like our good friends the rabbis. But in the end, most or all of these people will just go along with the confront God on every front agenda anyhow. Most of you might think, especially those of you who love the Word of God, whether Jew or Gentile, that this is completely insane and who would want to do such a thing? I tell you that the Sodomites would be that confrontational. Now when I use the word Sodomite, I am not using it in its dictionary or colloquial sense. And that is to say a bunch of homosexual rapists or whatever you've heard about them but I am using it in the sense that the Bible uses it. It is a people that fights all forms of holiness. And it is a people that is the exact opposite of sanctification when they are given full birth to. We have been misled by our leaders, whether rabbis like always, or pastors and priests, and they did not do this on purpose or out of ill will. They were just distracted by thinking that this story is primarily about sexual perversion or the lack of hospitali hospitality. But the Bible lists these as mainly the symptoms of the disease when the story's main theme that links everything together is about discrimination against anything that attempts any form of sanctification. And this eventually leads to anything that will offend them. Now, 
that might be a little too much for you to take in because this sounds a bit like the time that we are living in now. But hear me out because this is how the story starts and this is where the context of the story becomes most evident. And the men of the city, the Sodomites, from young man to elder, all the people together, encircled the dwelling. And they were summoning Lot, and they were saying to him, Where are the men who came into you tonight? Bring them out to us, in order that we may have relations with them. Do you know anywhere on earth where all the men of that city are surrounding houses of people and demanding for the guests of those houses to be let out so that the men of the city can have relations with them? Is this happening in San Antonio, Texas? John Hagee? What does it mean to Christianity? The Supreme Court in Washington has handed down its, its decision in a 5-4 ruling supporting same-sex marriage. But the Supreme Court in heaven has handed down its unanimous decision and a 3-0 ruling from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 2, 24, stating, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Marriage is exclusively between a man and a woman. Same-sex marriage will never be accepted in heaven as legitimate, so says God Almighty. This Supreme Court has made America the new Sodom and Gomorrah. God will have to judge America or he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Is this happening in San Francisco, California? What about Toronto, Canada or London, England? So now that you haven't turned off this video after my outrageous statement that you have been deceived by your leaders, you can now see the logic is simple. We are not living in the environment that Sodom or Judges 19 was experiencing. And that means no one will be apologizing just yet. It is actually unfortunate. I was talking with an old friend about the second coming and he's just excited, so excited because he said that all the signs have been fulfilled. I brought up in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus says that his second coming will be like in the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. For those of you listening and not watching, these are the verses where Yeshua indicates at his second coming the world will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. So I asked my good friend, where are the people surrounding the houses in our cities and demanding that the visitors come out and or be raped? As far as I can see, this question is currently unrebukable unrebukable, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment sections. Now, maybe after, uh, if, if a pre-tribulation pre -tribulation rapture happens, if that is what happens, everyone loses their mind and starts behaving that way. But that is not something I am even too sure about. So now that the exact sin that led to Sodom's other sins have been revealed, let's examine this a bit further. Many of the people who watch my videos are, I believe, between the age of 25 and 55. So you are all probably married, or at least most of you. I don't know how accurate these YouTube statistics were when I last looked at them, but that's the general idea that I've taken away. And if you are married, according to a sodomite, you have discriminated. You might not think of it that way because no one would be that stupid. But this is because you conflate discrimination with evil, like Sodom did. And many discriminations in our culture or our society are evil, like racial discrimination is abhorrent. But when you got married, 
you did discriminate against every other person of the opposite sex on the face of the earth. What do I mean by that? Because you said, not only I do to your spouse, but you said also I don't to every one else. When I married my wife, I discriminated against every other woman on the face of the earth. I said yes to her and no to everyone else. And if I am tempted, I also discriminate. This is a very modern way to say it like Peter would have said it. Beloved, I urge you as foreigners and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. I know that's not too popular nowadays. We are required to re resist or discriminate against all forms of fleshly lusts that war against our soul. In Genesis 19, we learn that nobody was allowed to say no. No one was afforded the ability to discriminate, which is what no mostly means. When you married in Sodom, you and your wife or your boyfriend or whatever belonged to everyone. You were not allowed to say no because no is a discriminatory word, like I've already said. Now, you might think that I have gone too far but just listen on. Just imagine this situation outside of Lot's home. Let me paint the picture. The police of Sodom surrounded Lot's house. The judges of Sodom surrounded Lot's house. The politicians, Antifa, FBI, the school boards, the child sex change surgeons, and the military surrounded the house of Lot. And even Nancy Pelosi's husband was one of the people who had surrounded the house of Lot. The whole woke establishment was there. There was no freedom of conscience, no freedom of worship, no freedom of speech in Sodom. It's a place where there is no liberty. And when you morally judged the sick and disgusting people of Sodom, when your speech offended them, they become violent. After Lot tells the people of Sodom, do not act wickedly, judging them morally, oh boy, offending them deeply, they then say, you came to reside as an alien, surely not to pass judgment. So now we will maltreat you rather than them. Does this sound familiar? When you think to speak out, how do you think you will be treated? Okay, maybe you won't be raped yet, but what did Sodom look like five years before they started raping people as a main policy objective? Maybe you have never seen this statement by the Sodomites as discriminatory, but imagine being at the front door with Lot you believe that a relationship is between a man and a woman. Though this would not be considered evidence in our culture, but it is the reason why Lot married. You believe that marriage in this context should be based on love and never forced. And you also believe that migrants or immigrants who are usually in a lack of knowledge about your culture and its ways should be protected and respected not just used for whatever purpose the powerful see fit. And because of your beliefs that you live out and counter the culture with, you are attacked by all those in authority. And outside your house in Sodom, the fake news media is framing the story in a way that makes Leviticus 18 look like it is discriminatory. Well, it is discriminatory. They make it look like it is hate speech, but you don't hate anyone. You love all those who are lost and disagree with you and practice different ways of sexuality. But they are the ones who hate and are practicing discrimination against you because that's what sodomites do. We can no longer breeze over and ignore the political climate of Sodom and merely focus on its perversion. 
when its perversion was merely a byproduct of its original sin. The people of Sodom were a political movement, a political movement that first started discrimination against all forms of sanctification within its own ranks, and then moved outward to everyone who would dare resist and oppose them, who would never submit. Now, I want to close with a story that is meant to show the spirit of the Sodomite and how ingrained in the daughters of Lot Sodom was. It didn't matter how much Lot loved his daughters. His daughters had to go to school. They had to play with other Sodomites. They dated Sodomites. So they learned things that Lot had no idea of. And one of the things that the daughters learned was how to take away a person's ability to discriminate. When someone would never have sex with you and you are not strong enough to rape them, what do you do? The eldest, doctor, the eldest daughter actually had an answer to that question. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man on the, on the face of the earth to have relations with us according to the customs of all the earth. Come, let's make our father drunk and let's sleep with him so that we may keep our family alive through our father. The eldest daughter here is describing a way to interfere with memory consolidation by inducing an alcohol blackout. And that becomes apparent in these two verses. And he, Lot, did not know when she, the elder, had sex with him, laid down with him, or got up. And he, Lot, did not know when his younger laid down with him or got up. This daughter knew how to take away her father's ability to say no, to discriminate, by inducing an alcohol blackout. How did Lot's innocent virgin unmarried daughter know this trick. These are the kinds of things your children learn living in these types of hell holes. And Lot had no idea that the people who he had originally confronted, who he originally confronted outside his door, were inside his house as well and planted deeply inside the heart of his daughters. Well, we're at the end, and I don't know if I have convinced you yet, but I hope you have a better ability to discriminate now what's going on in the story. But let me end with this. If you need to remember one thing, remember this. They use the word discrimination to discriminate. That's their main trick. And soon it will become illegal if they get their way for you to discriminate against them by saying no to knowing them. I know that sounds crazy, but study Judges 19 and all the other references to Sodom in the Bible and tell me different in the comment section. They'll stop at nothing to make you comply. For those of you who made it this far, listen to this. Fuck out of my way, this transgendered bitch has something to say. Now first off, I get everyone has different opinions, but when your opinion is wondering why you cannot openly discriminate against someone, that is kind of concerning. Like I get it, equality. Ooh, that's so scary. Why would people want to be treated as equals? Ugh. And to answer your question, no, it is not transphobic to not want to date a trans person, but if that is the sole reason for you not wanting to date them, then that is a little, it's, it's rude. It's like saying I don't want to date you because you're short or because you're Asian. Things you have no control over and that just makes you who you are. We're in the year 2021 and we still have people wondering why we're fighting for equality. Like I'm sorry, Karen and Chad's of the world, we're not gonna stop existing just because you said so.